We're good? Yeah. All right, how's everybody doing? I'm Josh Sisson, Potawatomi Zoo. And today is a very special day because today is actually World Giraffe Day. And all the giraffes yet at the Potawatomi Zoo, uh, living under a rock and haven't heard the news, we are bringing giraffes to the Potawatomi Zoo. Today we're just doing another update. Um, we know that's been pretty popular for you guys to see what's going on. Uh, so we're going to go inside the barn today, so some of the work. But you can kind of see right now, uh, the guys are getting the visitor center area right now. This is where the public, uh, this will be all glass here. Uh, you'll be able to go in and actually see the giraffes inside the barn. We'll be one of the only zoos in the region you can actually feed giraffes inside the barn in the wintertime. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, here comes the train. You can see how close the train's going to be uh, to the exhibit. Uh, so that'll be a cool feature when you're on the train that you'll be able to look over and actually see giraffes. So that'll be pretty exciting. Um, but look, you can see the big doors we've talked about that are 18 foot tall. We've got the uh, garage doors put on them now. Um, so in the winter time when it's really, really cold, we'll be able to pull those garage doors down and really seal up the barn and keep the heat in. Because uh, giraffes in the winter time, 65, 70 degrees. And that they're going to have to stay warm in the, in the winter. So, all right, well, let's walk inside and I'll show you some of the stuff that's been happening inside. If you guys uh, are having any issues with the volume or you can't hear me or you have any questions, just feel free to please say something on there and we'll uh, make sure we get it corrected. So we are right now walking through the giraffe barn. This is a big giraffe door, so the giraffes will walk in and out of here. Um, but you can see, now we're gonna start echoing. Um, so this over here that you're seeing is where you'll be able to walk right into the stall. So this will be a really nicely decorated fencing area. Uh, with this colored concrete here you'll be able to walk in this will be a huge communal stall so this area that i'm in right here this will be all natural substrate so this is going to be like a pan and then in here will be a chip and seal almost like a natural substrate to keep them off concrete so what will be really nice is in the winter time they won't be always be on concrete it's good for their joints uh, it's a lot more natural uh, but look you could uh, so drafts are in here public can be up here Giraffes will come in here and then you can feed them right from here. So uh, it's gonna be a pretty cool experience for everyone. But then when you're in here, what's gonna be cool is you can see over here, this is where all the stalls are gonna be. So we're gonna have rubber, see, if you can see the indention in the floor, that'll all be filled with a rubber. So there's gonna be rubber floors in the stalls. So again, no place where the giraffes are living on concrete, which is gonna be essential for their, uh, you see that? Um, and then there'll be a tamer in here. They can walk, uh, keepers can do training. Uh, it's this clip here, I'll go show you guys uh, the, uh, the hoof stock area. So we've been talking about there's going to be a lot of mixed species in with the giraffe and uh, zebra, ostriches. So we needed to also make them a little area to be able to come into. So we're calling this the hoof stock wing. So this over here, a little shorter ceilings. In here, this is 26 foot tall. Over here, 21 foot tall. And then you see this band of windows that are all along the front and all across the back. That'll be great because during the winter time, that'll make sure that we got UV light coming in here and sunshine for the giraffes. Um, again, we've done everything we needed to for giraffe husbandry and care. Every 20 minutes, it's a new recycled air. So in the winter time, the air doesn't get stagnant in here. Um, it's it's going to be pretty incredible for giraffes. And then over here is where we have the hoofstock wing. This is this will all have stalls coming. In. This will be where we'll have ostriches. Um, Got some guys hard at work over here. <laughs> uh, it's lunchtime. <laughs> lunch it is lunchtime. Um, so yes, yeah, so we'll have a. Like I said, we'll be able to. Uh, we'll actually be able to take the zebras and we'll be able to move them over to the draft stalls if we need to, um, and kind of universally use this building. But as you can see, we're making some pretty good progress. And this will also have the the windows at the top giving UV light for the animals. So we right now are planning to get four. So I think last time I gave an update, we had three on the way. I actually just got a fourth one last week. So we're gonna have four males coming in. So we're pretty excited and they're all under the age of four. So they're pretty young giraffes. Um, they are all males, so it's called a bachelor group. Uh, but taking a bachelor group is pretty important for the population because in zoos, in these breeding programs, it's really important that other zoos have the space to be able to continue to breed. So by these males forming this bachelor group, it allows the other zoos to continue to breed let us get these males, see how they do, and then, you know, eventually down the line, we may be able to get some females and do some breeding as well uh, here at the zoo. But uh, we're pretty excited about these males. The males are usually a lot more, a little friendlier. They, they're going to love being fed on the feeding platform. So I'm kind of excited about having this group of boys. That is exciting. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, yeah so we're going to have four. We actually had an, almost we were able to get five, and I was like, eh, we, let's start with four. Well, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to start with. Uh, so I was a giraffe keeper for many years, but we have a lot of staff here that are going to be going to some other zoos and getting a lot of training on giraffes. So they're kind of, they're newer to the uh, staff here at this zoo. So I'd rather just start with a smaller number. Let's get used to them. And then as we get our experience, then we'll start to build the herd. Um, so why don't we talk about where the giraffes come from? I know I say a lot of times on social media that we don't release where the giraffes are coming from. Um, what is the reasoning behind that? Yeah, so you know, a lot, so a lot can change for one. Um, and you know, when we were doing these recommendations, uh, we just want to make sure that, uh, that we're taking care of the giraffes. You know, when you make a, there's a lot that goes into this. We don't know exactly when they're coming in. Um, there, there's a lot that goes into the hauling of giraffes. So we just want to make sure that we're, we're doing everything we need to do before they get here. Um, we don't want people reaching out to the other facilities and getting involved. And it's just there's a lot that goes into it. So it's not that it's really a secret. It's just, it's, it's just, better, it's just better for the different facilities and stuff not to, to make those big announcements until we 100% know the giraffes are on their way and that they're here. So. Yeah, good. Awesome. So what else is going to be in here? Is there a diet kitchen? There's a diet kitchen. There's a keeper area. Uh, we can walk over here. You'll see this will be, we have a whole facility that's just for hay storage. Um, we're going to have a walk-in fridge and a walk-in freezer. Uh, browse, and we're going to be reaching out to you guys around this area because we need Browse is basically branches of trees, elm, uh, sugar maple, mulberry. That's an essential part of giraffe diet. Um, we're going to have to literally cut branches every single day and feed giraffes. So we're going to be reaching out to you guys, anybody that has these trees in their yards. I, I mean, I, with the storm we just had, I was driving in and I saw some trees down. I was like, oh, if we had giraffes, this would be perfect. I would be driving around this neighborhood right now collecting branches. Um, but we will actually be freezing the browse in the deep freeze. Uh, for the winter time and then during the um, on time that's why we'll have a walk-in fridge we'll actually keep that browse in there keep it cool we'll be able to feed things like the okapi the giraffe uh, so there's a lot that goes into this but you can see this whole area right here is just for hay storage so you can imagine four giraffes eating uh, alfalfa hay we're going to need a lot of hay so this will be for their hay grain any kind of storage like that uh, to care for them so, Do we have a better idea on timeline for the barn finishing, the giraffes being here, um, things like that? Yeah, so I mean, I think everyone's dealing with this in construction. We are having a heck of a time right now with materials. Um, I got some pretty bad news uh, last week that the metal that's for the feeding platform is actually um, not going to be available till spring. Uh, so we actually did some rede redesigning that I'm actually much happier with that won't involve that metal. But there's some things like the canopy that's supposed to be this beautiful metal uh, sculpted tree um, may not be coming into spring, but it's not going to affect the giraffes coming in. We're still planning on having giraffes at the end of September, beginning of October. They are hauled like, just like horses, um, so it's a metal trailer. Uh, so we've got to be careful with the heat. We just got to make sure um, that they're not driving across country when it's too warm. So um, I'm hoping for September, but if we're still having some hot temperatures, we'll have to wait till October. Um, but as of everything's looking, I can pretty, I always, I always hate saying guaranteeing, but I'm pretty certain that we're going to have drafts for gift of lights. And like I said, it'll be a perfect time. They can come in, start getting acclimated to their barn. Uh, people can start to meet them inside the barn and see them. And then they'll be all ready for their brand new exhibit in the spring. Yeah. And people will get to see them before they maybe start feeding or eating. People exactly. Right? So exactly. In the area, just maybe not be able to yeah. Right but everything else will be getting done. You know, even if the, if the canopy takes a little while, we'll still have the exhibit done. They can still go outside. Um, and then we'll just, the day that the canopy arrives, we'll just have to bring them in and build the canopy. So we just, given the situation, I think everyone's dealing with it and the, with this pandemic last year, uh, we'll just have to kind of roll with it. Um, but we're making it work. Uh, I think we posted today, didn't we, about uh, the, the sculpture? Uh, yeah, on Instagram. If, if you go onto Instagram, we, uh, we're going to have the 16-foot tall giraffe sculpture at the front of the exhibit. It's all bronze. It's a female with her baby. Um, it's, it's a beautiful sculpture, and I just got the clay version of it. Um, the, the artist that does this has done uh, this work for mini zoos like Audubon zoos, and they're just beautiful bronze sculptures. She shows the texture, the muscles, and kids will be able to get around the baby and take pictures, and the mom. It's going to be a pretty... Pretty cool thing, so I'm excited about that. So if you can check that out. Yeah, it's uh, Jocelyn Russell, and please. Jocelyn Russell, our, yeah, she's yeah, she's amazing. Instagram. Zoo's Instagram will have that. Yeah, but like I said, today's World Giraffe Day, so we wanted to make sure that we got into this giraffe barn and show you guys kind of what's going on. Um, I look forward to the day that we can celebrate World Giraffe Day with us here. Oh, heck yeah. um, like all species, you know, it's it's conservation of giraffes. I mean, they're a large animal, so they're becoming fewer and fewer in the wild. They really need our help. There's zoos. Uh, there's 230 some accredited zoos that donate literally 
millions and millions of dollars to the conservation in the field, and the draft project's one of those. We'll be contributing funding to the conservation work that's happening in the wild, uh, making sure that we're funding uh, those, as, uh, those areas as well. So it's just, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, and that's one of the most exciting reasons to get a new species like this, yes. because it gives us a chance to talk about conservation. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, for us to have Okapi, we donate thousands of dollars a year to the Okapi Foundation um, that helps save Okapi in the wild. Uh, we donate uh, funding to save rhinos in the wild. Uh, we, we donate a lot of money, actually, that uh, people don't realize. So when you come to the zoo and you buy a ticket and you buy a membership, yes, it's helping our, uh, support the zoo and our operations. I mean, our food bill alone is $200,000. But a portion of that funding also goes to actual the field um, for helping save uh, endangered species. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yep. All right, I don't think we have any other questions unless anyone has a last minute question. But, um yeah. No, nope. I mean, you, I'll give you one more look. You can see just how grand this building is. Uh, we'll pan around. It's pretty exciting. I keep coming out here and uh, just running around in here. And I'm just so excited that you all are going to be able to come in here and actually see this for yourself. Um, I think zoos are becoming much more transparent. They want people to see the behind the scenes. They want to see how giraffes are cared for. And I just really think it helps with uh, understanding the mission of what we're doing here. So, all right. All right, well, happy World Giraffe Day. Um, we'll hope to see you here at the zoo. We'll see you soon.